welcome once again uh, to our Bible study here at Good Shepherd. If it's your first time viewing the Bible study, that's wonderful. Glad to have you aboard. If you've been around a while, that's wonderful also. So I was thinking today, uh, recording the Bible study, you know, we've been doing this, or I've been doing this, I believe, uh, since March. Since March. And, you know, when you start something new, you're saying, what is its benefit? What is its value? How does this make an impact? And it's really been a, a wonderful opportunity for me to share God's word in, into a, a larger, a larger medium, if you will, to, uh, the World Wide Web, um, and also an opportunity for for me, along with you, to grow in God's word as we do, uh, as we study it here every week. So I'm glad you're joining me. And if you have any questions about the Bible study, uh, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to to try to answer. Uh, your questions. Today we're going to begin our uh, Bible study with the portals of prayer and the prayer for the blessing on the word. Almighty God, what a wonderful storehouse of treasures is discovered in your word. As we meditate on it, long for it, and delight in it, may we be assured that your hand of blessing will not be empty. Grant us your Holy Spirit as we acknowledge your word as the means of grace, revealing your amazing love for us. Provide us with the blessing of your word, that all we do be according to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so, as we continue, we are in the epiphany season. We continue to, to be in the season of light, uh, where Jesus is revealed as the light of the world. Uh, remember last week where uh, we had Jesus with his preaching and with his healing, showing that he is uh, the Son of God, the one for whom salvation comes. Today I chose the Old Testament reading appointed this Sunday uh, because I love the text, first and foremost. Isaiah chapter 40, most of us are familiar uh, with verses 28 through 31, uh, which we will ultimately get to this morning, or this afternoon, whenever you're watching. Um, and the reason we love Isaiah, I love Isaiah 40, is because of the image that's already on the screen, the image of an, of an eagle. Uh, people love, maybe you love, uh, the hymn, the song on eagle's wings. Very popular here at Good Shepherd. And uh, if you've ever seen an eagle, they're pretty extraordinary. Uh, one time I had the chance, as I was heading up to Marquette, Michigan, uh, for a uh, district conference, I was driving on this road, a little two-lane road, and right in front of me, now a couple hundred yards off, probably a hundred yards off, see this big, big whatever animal in the road and, uh, you know, slowed down, got closer and closer. And as, uh, as soon as I got uh, close enough, sure enough, it was an eagle and it was majestic. It was amazing uh, to see it to fly off. Not very uncommon eagles in this area around the Fox River, maybe in your area uh, they are. Uh, so if you get a chance to come up to the Fox Cities, uh, into Wisconsin here, Appleton, uh, there is a very good chance that you'll see an eagle, especially this time of the year, winter, uh, they're a little easier to spot um, as they have their nests and as they're flying around uh, in this area. So we would think about Isaiah chapter 40 with the eagle and how extraordinary and strong uh, an eagle is uh, as a creation of God. Today, apply that, apply that extraordinary strength, um, the victory that seems to be uh, emblematic of the um, eagle with that of God. And we need to know that God is our strength and that God is our song and that he is our salvation. And uh, we're going to see why that is as we continue on. The title today is Wait for the Lord and Hope in Him. Wait for the Lord, Hope in Him. And that's what we needed for the, the Judean exiles at this point uh, who are in Babylon. Uh, people, uh, God's people who have been rightly exiled because of their disobedience. But in the midst of the exile, there are those who uh, believe in God. There are people who, who knew Him but are a part of the greater uh, people who are uh, uh, with them going through this difficult time. And as they are uh, dealing with their exile, they're wondering, is God 
alive? Is God around? Does God care? Um, and so we may ask ourselves, is God silent? Does God sometimes ignore us? Or has he forgotten us? Uh, when that happens and we are, find ourselves in difficult straits, uh, it can be a temptation to turn to other gods, lowercase g. And that's what uh, God was uh, helping his people not to do uh, through the prophet Isaiah, to recognize that put your hope in anything less than him, uh, you have no peace. You have no victory. You have no strength. So let's look how God responds. Is God silent? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 21. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Well, how can we know that God is alive and active in our lives? What do we know? What do we hear? Uh, we can look at creation itself as the canvas that God has made and that God uh, continues to uh, create, recreate uh, his design to take care of. Um, every day as we wake up and have breath within us is a reminder that God as creator is alive and well because we are alive and well and he is taking care of us. And this is uh, something we have learned from the beginning. And we understand from the foundations of the earth, Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So creation itself bears a, a strong witness uh, that God is uh, in charge. And that in him, we hope in him that we can confidently wait for his plan. Because as we look around us, he's got everything else in control under his control, and he has my life uh, under his control as well, which is good uh, because he's directing it always uh, for our good and for our benefit. But uh, we have to be patient. But how is a Yahweh's authority over the natural world described as we continue on from Isaiah 40? And how is authority over the world's mighty people manifested? So when we have this, uh, these words from Isaiah, I just, it's just really meditative words just to think about what God is saying and who he is in his sovereignty and his power and who we are as his creation. Remember that. He's the creator and we are his creation. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as his emptiness. Who's in control? God is in control. Uh, the creation account, once again, God speaks and things have their being. They come to life. It's extraordinary. God spoke, and it was. And so everything in, in the earth is his handiwork. And... And we are those whom he has created. Even the rulers of the earth, God has established. And they are not greater than him. They are subject to him. So to put your trust in rulers is of no use. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their uh, stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. Okay? We think about our, our life, the breath of our life. Uh, we hope it's a long life. My grandmother, 101. Uh, sometimes that's not the case. But in the grand scheme of things, our lives are short in comparison to the eternity for which God has set before us. And since God, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day, uh, God is not as time determined, determinant as, as we are. And so he, um, unlike us, doesn't panic because he's God. He knows before the middle and the end of all things as uh, everything is, is un, un, unwinding in his plan. Uh, so as we think about ourselves, the natural world described, he is majestic over all things. Um, and his authority, he brings up 
uh, people and he takes them away. And we continue to have leaders and rulers. That's why no matter who is in charge, leadership, let's talk about uh, our country, there's no need to fear uh, because God is in control. And what can man do to me? Uh, the only thing man can do to me is, I guess, you know, take away my life, but if they do that, then I go on to eternity with the Lord. So even in that, I will not fear or be afraid. So again, as we think about what they're going to in exile, wondering whether or not God is here, God is there, they're searching for answers, they're searching for some help, they, they want um, some deliverance, they want it now. So some Israelites were comparing the one true God with their captors, many gods, gods of the Babylonians here. Uh, after all, right, the Babylonians have, have taken them in captivity. Maybe their gods are superior than uh, Yahweh, but then we know that's not true. Yahweh is ordering the Babylonians, as he did the Assyrians, as he will the Persians, to act according to his will and uh, for the guidance of his plan. How would you say he is, how he brings out their hosts, the stars by number, calling them by name, and not one is missing, be a comfort to his people in exile? So to whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him? says the Holy One. Notice Holy One, one person, three gods. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Uh, it reminds us a little bit of Job, doesn't it? When Job is questioning God and, and how he is uh, orchestrating his life, and God responds with the questions, well, multiple questions. Who are you to darken my counsel with words of men? Tell me if you know all these things. The fact of the matter is God knows us. He loves us. He takes care of us. And his plan is always good. So then why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not grow faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And for me, this is part of the, the problem we have, is the mind of God. Trying to put our feeble, sinful minds into God's mind. God, just tell us what you're, what you're doing, or this is what is going to be the outcome of this. And God's mind, God's wisdom doesn't match that. He doesn't match that. God may spare somebody. God may not. God may allow this, but he doesn't allow that. And it can be confusing at times because we're trying to base our relationship oftentimes on God, on the good things that he happens to us, the way he answers us, the way we want him to. And when our relationship with God in faith is based upon the way God we want God to answer us the way we think he should, and not on the way that he does, you know, then things can go a little sideways for us with God. Because this is what we expect. Now, is that saying that God is wrong? Absolutely not. We have to wait. We have to be patient. We have to bear uh, this, this challenge, but we don't ever bear it alone. Uh, as God reminds us to cast all our burdens on him, uh, for he cares for us. The creator of the earth, ends of the earth, he doesn't grow faint or weary. God is not limited in what he can do or will do for you and me. What a great comfort this is. Not one is missing. God knows everything about everything. And it's all ordered uh, for our good. Um, and the best way to remember that, of course, is through the cross and the empty tomb. And uh, when we think that, well, all is lost, all is hopeless, God has forgotten me, remember the cross and the empty cross. Know how much he loves you. He sent Jesus to die and rise for you. And this is the outcome of that. The outcome of trusting in the Lord by faith, not by our sight, not by our wisdom, but by God's wisdom alone. What happens? This is that beautiful image of the, of the eagle, right? 
How would the Lord's strength become his people's strength? He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord, remember that's the key, who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Very important here, the word wait. Wait for the Lord. So often we want to figure it out ourselves. To handle it as we would do it. But when we wait for the Lord, how are we doing it? Our waiting is always by faith and not sight. So when we wait in faith, our, our attention, our, our direction is fully on God. And when it's fully on God and not on the things of this world, uh, we find ourselves trusting in his plan, in his design. When we wait for the Lord, by faith, not by sight, our worry is gone. Because by faith, we remember the one who has created us, who has redeemed us, who has sanctified us. Now, in the midst of exile, in the midst of the storm, it's hard to think about these things because, again, we want immediate satisfaction for what's taking place. But in the end, we will have that. We do have that because by faith we live. And so our worry is gone, and our strength then increases. I am going to go about my day in the victory that God has given me, not in what the world uh, and that I'm facing within this world. I am confident. I am soaring. I am strong because he, God, is with me. When I am weak, he is strong. And God will and does carry us as long as he needs to do so. Until we have that strength and that faith is renewed and, and, and now we're walking again and now we're, we're filled with hope and, 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 and uh, you know, our, our focus is where it needs to be. When it's not, God carries us. He never leaves us or forsakes us. And that's important. So as we go through this epiphany season and we think about who God is, we can say that there's a God who's worth our wait, who's worth waiting for, because he answers all our needs and helps us every day so that our strength is renewed and our faith continues in his strength. Well, God bless your day. Uh, may you find comfort and peace through God's word and continue to live as his redeemed child.